Today we'll look at Microsoft 365 security. In the face of increased mobility, security breaches through cyber attacks and new data protection regulations like GDPR, the protection of your information, users, apps, and devices is probably the biggest challenge now facing us in IT. Now our approach with Microsoft 365 is to give you a spectrum of built-in security defenses to protect your users, information, and devices. And we give you a rich capability set that spans Windows 10, Office 365, enterprise mobility and security, and leverages a number of services within Microsoft Azure. These include identity and access management of your users, their granular permissions to access services and content, how they're able to authenticate and real-time detection of anomalies such as risk related with location and device. Continuous protection against threats, starting with the protection against internet-based threats that block unsafe links and attachments and more, through to application-based threats such as browser-based exploits, malicious macros or other processes, uh, through to protections on the device level that isolate and maintain the integrity of processes running on the device, and tools to detect and investigate and respond to attacks in order to be able to analyze and contain them so that you can recover quickly from threats plus controls for persistent safeguarding of your information as it flows between people, devices, and apps, and the ability to holistically monitor your security posture and harden your defenses. At the core, these are powered by the Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph to give you the most up-to-date protection against the latest attack vectors. This collects billions of security-related signals from consumer and commercial services, email and device endpoints, authentication from Azure AD and Microsoft accounts, URLs and IPs are scanned via our search engine, as well as signals from third-party sources. And then machine learning and analytics identifies threat signals, for example, DDoS attacks or phishing, spam, and suspicious logins, which allow us to quickly adapt and deploy new defenses and orchestrate remediation across Microsoft 365 when we discover new vulnerabilities. Now let's take a look at the in-product experiences starting with identity and access management. And some highlights here are Azure Active Directory is the identity control plane for apps and devices and cloud services. And it's really the modern way to connect to Office 365 and other Microsoft Cloud services. Conditional access then allows us to define different authentication requirements based on where you are logging in from and which device you're using, as well as things like anomalous behaviors. At the device level, we think about biometrics as a unique identifier for simpler and more secure access to your devices and apps. Windows Hello offers device-based multi-factor authentication. It relies on the device itself, your PIN, or a unique biometric identifier, such as your face or fingerprint, which you can enforce via policy. Now, beyond identity, we enable continuous protection, detection, response against known and unknown threats. At the endpoint, Windows 10 uses virtualization-based security at the core to ensure boot integrity and code integrity using secure boot. Now, we protect against unauthorized apps using application control. We can also stop credential theft with Credential Guard, and the new Exploit Guard will reduce the attack surface for running applications. Lastly, I'll show you here Application Guard, which is going to isolate and mitigate browser-based threats by running the browser in an isolated container. On the Office side of things, beyond email, we've introduced safe links across the Office apps to protect you against the dynamic list of known malicious websites. Safe Attachments and Outlook, which goes beyond email filtering, inspects attachments and we inform the user of any malicious attachment as we replace it with a text file. Now, behind the scenes, we're running the attachment in an isolated detonation chamber to determine if the attachment is safe to be delivered or if it isn't. Also, Defender Application Control in Windows 10 operates off an approved allow and deny list of application that we've checked for safety, and all of that's configured via endpoint protection policies inside of Microsoft Intune. We do a number of things for threat detection response. Now here, I'm in Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, which will give you a full history of the anatomy of an attack. And you know 80% of attacks use stolen credentials. And in this case, we can see an elevation of privileges attack. Ultimately, though, we want to prevent things from ever reaching your users. So in the Office Threat Management Dashboard, we provide you a view of trending malware and attacks, recent alerts within your environment, top targeted users, and the origins of those attacks. Now via Office 365 Threat Explorer, you can also get richer information about those attack types. In fact, threats detected on any of the services feed back into the Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph and benefit everyone using the Microsoft Cloud. Of course, the main reason for keeping threats in check is to protect information. Now, to ensure that only intended recipients with the right identity can read an email message with its content, we give you Office Message Encryption. This not only works in Outlook, but also across other email clients. 
Now, beyond email, we have Azure Information Protection, which gives your users a way to classify and label their documents, ensuring that the protection also travels with the file. And we give controls to IT to trigger the right set of protections based on the sensitivity of information. And one thing to note, the information classification engines in AIP can also be applied to label content in services outside of Microsoft services using Cloud App Security. Now, beyond labels on files within your internet, you can use SharePoint and apply privacy settings. For example, if a site is public or if it's private, so it's invite only. And I can also do things like apply classification labels. So it will automatically apply differentiated policies based on the confidentiality of the contents within the site. Now, across email and files on SharePoint and OneDrive, data loss prevention helps educate users, limits sharing, and can also enforce encryption where sensitive information is detected. Here, I'm in OneDrive, and I can see that DLP has detected sensitive information. If I right-click on the policy tip, I can see more details about the information in that document. This information and more really gets rolled up into the Advanced Data Governance Center inside of Office 365. And that's going to give you intelligent recommendations to improve your data governance based on the industry and region that you're in. Moving on to security management with Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, you can see what resources in your org need attention. You can see active alerts, users at risk, and machines at risk. Now, if I go into security analytics, I can also get a nice view of the security updates that I need to apply to the machines in my organization. If I export that CSV, I'll see all the details here in one view. You can also better manage security and compliance settings for your productivity services all in a single web console in the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. Now, as you plan your implementation of security controls in Microsoft 365, you can also assess your current security technologies and build an implementation plan with the new IT Roadmap tool. It's going to help you assess which services you have configured and the current tools for security across Microsoft 365. Now, the security technologies we've got really spread across multiple services. Now, here I'm going to go ahead and select Shared Services for Identity, Security Compliance, Group Collaboration Services, and PC Deployment and Management. Now, here within Access Management, I can see a nice continuum of the four different levels. I'm going to go ahead and select level four in this case, and that's going to expose all the things I need to do. So I'll pick the things I already have in place here. In this case, I've got my directory service synchronizing. And here I can see a nice list of all the things I need to do, as well as resources to create a detailed IT roadmap action plan for moving from what I have to my desired future state. So that was a quick overview of how you can protect your users, information, and device endpoints using Microsoft 365. Be sure to check out the Microsoft 365 security playlist on Microsoft Mechanics to learn more about the topics I've covered today. Just about every single tool and process I've shown here was explained in depth on a recent show or demo bench. And to learn more, you can explore and go hands-on with our labs online. Thanks for watching.